Hey, it's Brian Gabriel here, and welcome to day three of our 30-day reading challenge on becoming a more knowledgeable libertarian. Today, I'm very excited, the author is Lou Rockwell. Lou Rockwell, and, and it's called The Fascist Threat. That's what our article is today. And, and uh, fascist, you can't use that word. You can't call people fascists. That's mean. Lou, you're mean. It's such a pejorative. You can't, people don't walk around saying, you know, I'm a fascist. What do you think? You know, it's a good system. It, it's a system that works. But that is the system that we have today. It's not just something Mussolini and Hitler had. It's what we have today, according to Lou Rockwell. This is what the United States is, a fascist state. Hmm, is he right about that? Well, the definition of fascism is it cartelizes the private sector, centrally plans the economy to subsidize producers, exalts the police state as the source of order, denies fundamental rights and liberties to individuals, and makes the executive state the unlimited master of society. So, uh, yes, he's right. We are a fascist state. That is quite scary. And nobody really cares. We're all so apathetic about it. It's like, eh, fascism, yeah, it's pretty, it works, doesn't it? I've, you know, I'm doing pretty well with under fascism. How about you? No, we're not doing well. He talked about the decline since fascism has been put in place all over Europe and the United States. Look at the poverty rates. Look at uh, the, the incomes have stagnated since uh, we were taken off the gold standard in 1973. The, it, the median income hasn't risen at all since 1989. Not at all. Well, well, that was a great thing. Women's liberation, right? We had to all of a sudden start two people per household working. The male and the female. Husband and wife. Mother, father had to start working to support the, the household, but uh, the state intellectuals came out and said, oh, it's a great thing, it's called women's liberation, this is wonderful. Yes, we'll destroy your dollar and then come up with great excuses. We'll, we'll just come up with nice little stories. And, uh, and let's look at the origins of fascism, because is this really, Lou, is this really a fascist state? Well, let's look at the origin. They're a bunch of socialists. That's who the fascists are. Mussolini was a socialist before he got, he got into power. And, of course, the, the American left loved this guy. But why would the American left go for this corporatism? Because that's what, that's what fascism is. It's like this corporatism. It's, it's all about the producers, subsidizing producers. Well, the left shouldn't be about that, right? They're supposed to be fighting that kind of stuff. It's all about labor movement and everything. Uh, well, so why did they go for this? It was a compromise. It was a political compromise. You have the left and the right, and I don't know if that's like the greatest way of looking at things, this whole left-right. It's, it's really a fake paradigm, isn't it? But let's just go with it. You have the left who says, you know, labor is what produces value. They're, they're the real they're the real producers. And then the right says, no, it's the businessmen. They, they're the real producers. And so uh, that's the distinction between them. But what happened? What was the big compromise? Lou Rockwell says, well, we just cartelized both of them, both labor and business. So, so there we have fascism. That's the nature of our fascism. That's why the left got on board with this New Deal plan of FDRs. Because why else would they be for this uh, subsidizing the producers? They're supposed to be about the poor, the working class, the proletariat. But this was a way to get the bourgeoisie on board as well because you know, he says, hey, we give them their benefits, we give them their, uh, their heavy doses of national pride and their, their health care and all this stuff, and they're, they're really happy. So it's, it's this case of left meets right, and it's a wonderful romantic relationship. And really, why fascism over socialism? Why did they, because they're just socialists. Why did they choose fascism as the, uh, fascism as the vehicle? Because it's more, uh, people like it, people like the idea of, of fascism, it looks kind of like capitalism, so they say, yeah, that's a pretty good thing. We get what we need. We get our insurance and our medical benefits, uh, so it's great. Well, are we a fascist state? There's eight points. Oh, i got to make these quickly. He, uh, uh, Rockwell says there's eight marks of, of fascist policy. Okay, uh, The government is totalitarian because it acknowledges no restraint upon its powers. That's point one. No restraint upon its powers. Uh, is there any restraint? Upon the powers of the, of, of the U.S. government, I don't think so. I mean, they've they've look at the bureaucracy, the government intervention everywhere in our health, in our food, in our clothing, and our in every aspect of our lives. Nothing's untouched. I like this quote from Mussolini: "All within the state, uh, nothing outside the state, uh, nothing against the state." Uh, 
why can't I use this fun, fat guy, Italian accent with Mussolini? It doesn't sound quite right, because he's this dictator, but uh, he was Italian. Point, point two, government is a de facto dictatorship. Oh, now, blue, it's not a dictatorship. Come on, of course it's a dictatorship. What about the Supreme Court ruling for Obamacare? All they're, all they're doing is supporting whatever the administration wants, just rubber stamping it. It's, uh, it's this... I mean, think about it. The executive has 99% of the government employees that we have. All the bureaucrats are in the executive branch. Checks and balances between the three branches? That's a, that's just a, that's a myth. At, at least it is today. And even if, it, uh, even if you actually had checks and balances, the state still wins. The state still wins. Oh, so, yeah, it's definitely a de facto uh, dictatorship. Whether he says Obama state is the Bush state is the Clinton state. You know, who cares? Who cares? People think there's going to be a big hope and change. He said, okay, this, this, whole, this whole euphoria that, that uh, it's a democracy. We need a messiah. We need a change. That came to a fever pitch, he says, during the Obama uh, uh, election, the campaign. Uh, isn't that the case? Uh, point three. Immense bureaucracy to run the economy, to run the so-called capitalist system. In this huge bureaucracy. We got it. Point four. Point four. Uh, producers are organized into cartels. Absolutely. So what they do is they put, the, the government puts, the fascist government puts the controls in the hands of the producers. And they call it capitalism. No, capitalism was, is when it's in the hands of the consumers. That's the beauty. It's not about it's not about the producer. It's about the consumers being in, in control. Oh, so uh, point five is uh, pr this principle of autarky. That's what economic planning is based on. That's that's uh, point five. What does that mean, autarky? It means economic self-sufficiency. This idea that oh, Japan is producing all those scientists, those little scientists running around in Japan. We have to. Come on, kids, you become scientists. You know, we'll, I'm sure we'll provide great science jobs for you. Come on, become scientists. We can't lose the battle of science. You know, the, those Japs are becoming scientists. Every second there's a new Jap scientist. It's ridiculous. How about free trade? How about, how about we, cons we, we, we consume their, their science products and we give them our uh, well, whatever we produce, right? How about that? How about some free trade? But, but, but no, that's not the way it is. Instead, it has to be this autarky, this, we need economic self-sufficiency. We can't be trading with these people. And that, uh, point six is, is the government sustains economic life through spending and borrowing. Stimulus one, stimulus two, stimulus three, stimulus four, stimulus five. Uh, Obama, Ob oh, he's talking about this primetime speech Obama gave, and he talked about how uh, uh, people are unemployed at a time when schools, bridges, and infrastructure need to be built. Uh, what uh, what's the what there what's wrong with this picture you know sort of thing, uh, and 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 the fascists also they love to to have this national greatness they're they're uh, they're they're monument builders they're just monument builders and and so he went on uh, building a world class transportation system uh, is part of what made us an economic superpower yeah okay whatever so but of course you do all this you build the bridges and the and the world class whatever by borrowing a bunch of money and and then spending it. Uh, point seven, militarism is a main state of government spending. Oh, need I say any, anything about this? We spend more than the whole world combined on our on our military budget. China is number two and they spend one tenth of what we spend. Number eight, military spending has imperialist aims. Of course it does. Sure it does. Absolutely. And uh, he, Lou Rockwell does end on a positive note for this article, fortunately, because it's kind of depressing when you think about how fascist the United States is. Uh, but he does end on this. He says there's this anti-fascist movement. There's not just in the United States. It's worldwide. And, and it's, it's just, it's really growing. And it's great to be a part of it. And, you know, I, I think the big thing is... Uh, Two points, two positive points here. Fascism doesn't even believe in itself. I mean, it has no intellectual foundation whatsoever. Uh, so, so we have a very weak enemy. All they have is brute force. That's all they have to use against us. Ultimately, the ideas are going to win. Uh, and we can't compromise and say, you know, we, we just need some good people to be elected. Or we need a different form of government. Fascism is not the way to go. Democracy or socialism or even a Republican government is, is, is a way to go. No. How about, how about no state? How about no state? Right? No, let's not compromise with this stuff. Because the state is just a parasite. The state, the whole, uh, Rockwell says statism is the great lie. Statism itself, it's given us what? Fear, poverty, war, and death. 
So we don't need any state. We can, we can uh, rule ourselves here. The choice is really the choice we face is really between total state or total freedom. Because the state, as long as it exists, even if it's tempered, like the the United States Republic was tempered uh, at the founding, but there was that germ of democracy that, of course, Lincoln and his henchmen uh, uh, gave us in the 1860s. They said, "All right, one man, one vote. Let's do it. Let's do this thing." And of course, since then we've been this imperialistic nation that's uh, really a fascist, growing a fascist nation that's that's eating its own people, killing its own people. Look at the Civil War. And uh, let's end with this quote by Mises. So you don't want any state. No state. Let's just get freedom. Natural order. Mises said, In the long run, even the most despotic governments, with all their brutality and cruelty, are no match for ideas. Eventually, the ideology that has won the support of the majority will prevail and cut the ground from under the tyrant's feet. Then the oppressed... Uh, then the oppressed many will rise in rebellion and overthrow their masters. Well, thank you for the hope, uh, Mises. Thank you for the hope, Lou. And uh, let's all keep reading this, becoming more in uh, this 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 30-day challenge, becoming more informed libertarians, so we can fight this fascist threat.